So today's title of my lecture is United We Stand. These are the disclosures. Um, I am uh, involved in the two stem cell trials related to the COVID-19 infection. One is sponsored by the California uh, Institute of Regenerative Medicine and uh, Cellularity Incorporated, and the other one is Pluristem. I will be talking about these trials today. And I called my lecture um, United We Stand because divided we fall. We live in a, a very divided society, rich, poor, uh, women, um, men, you name it. And the current pandemic did not uh, help the situation uh, to make it better. With social distancing rules, we are even further from each other than ever before. As a physician, I always thought that in the face of a disease and death, we are all equal. As an American physician, Samuel Johnson said, disease generally begins at equality that death com completes. But does it? If we look at this um, distribution of mortality among Californians, it's mostly the um, older people who essentially assume all the mortality. But remember March of 2020, when we realized that the disease is coming to our neighborhoods? I was mortified. I was so scared for my children. But you know, then, looking at the fatality rate uh, of children, I felt the greatest relief. They are less likely to be affected. But then I looked at the other age extreme, my parents. What will happen to them? And as you can see, the majority of the people who have been affected are people above 60. This picture recently taken in Northern California symbolized so much death rampage through elderly community. And as the fire uh, is rampaging through this uh, senior center. And as we realize that uh, barrier precautions are like masks are very important in prevention of COVID-19, what can we do when these measures fail? Of course, we all have our immunity which separates us into individual organisms to the point that we cannot transplant anything to another human being without this uh, new organ being rejected unless we are using medications. So we are dividing again, divided again into separate immune systems. But these days, since uh, science allows us to administer some medications and transplant different uh, tissues, essentially we can unite humans in our uh, quest to find the disease. So how about a possibility to share our immune response? I am fortunate to be involved in the stem cell clinical trial, uh, which help us share the immune system capabilities. But a little bit of background. We have different me mechanisms in our defense response to bacteria and viruses. And one of the mechanisms is adaptive immunity. And that's why the vaccine is very important, because it's very specific, very effective. That's how we eliminated polio. And when we give a vaccine or the person encounter a virus through multiple steps that require several weeks, we will eventually develop an immune response that will allow us uh, not to, for example, catch polio. And this mechanism essentially leads to creation of antibodies and killer cells. But as I said, this mechanism is not available right now for COVID-19. But we also have innate immunity. As we all studied at school, these are the macrophages that are capable of engulfing the viruses or bacteria and digesting it to something not dangerous to our body. What not everyone realizes, there are also other cells it's called natural killer cells. These cells survey our bodies daily. That's why we don't develop cancers and that's why we don't develop diseases from some viruses that we'd never encountered before. They kill everything that don't look like our own body. And these natural killer cells are part of this immunity. That's why a company, Cellularity, developed a new product that they called SYNC001. And these are natural killer cells that were harvested from, from placentas and uh, transplanted into patients suffering from COVID-19. This trial is sponsored by California Institute of Regenerative Medicine. And our expectations are that these transplanted cells will eliminate COVID-19 virus by killing the cells affected by the virus. The overall design is of this trial is essentially it's a phase one study. It means that we will be looking for adverse events. That's how we start in research with the phase one. And the first phase is usually a small number of patients. And in this trial, we will enroll 14 patients with COVID-19 infection. And um, these patients will be followed for up to 12 months. 
So these patients will be between 18 and 72 years old who are symptomatic from their COVID-19 infections like fever, cough, and uh, chest X-ray findings that consistent with the uh, pneumonia from COVID-19 infection. And what we will be assessing is essentially the adverse events. But there is always a possibility that we will be able to advance to phase two. If we don't have any adverse events, and if the efficacy will be at least uh, suggested by the result of this trial, we will go into the phase two. And in phase two, we are planning to enroll 86 patients. And these patients will be essentially um, monitored again for adverse events, but now we will be aiming for efficacy. And um, through doing serial tests from mucous membranes like nasopharyngeal swabs, we will um, uh, find out how fast uh, we eliminate the uh, virus from the body. But there are different situations. Right now, we're talking about the situation where the immune response of the patients is not sufficient to clear the virus fast enough from the body. Another company, uh, Pluristem, essentially developed a different uh, uh, approach. They use the product called, called PLX-PAD. This is a, a different type of cells. They are mesenchymal-like cells, again, from the placenta, but it will be a phase two study. In this study, I'm excited to say that we will be using this drug in a severely affected patients because sometimes what happens is that the body of a patient reacts so much that it damages not only the uh, cells affected by the virus, but also normal cells to the point where the body uh, cannot regenerate that uh, tissue that was affected. So as a background, we need like a... Um, the defense mechanisms to be in check with our ability to regenerate the tissue there. And in these patients, uh, the tissue is being destroyed so fast that it leads to more damage than good. So essentially, in these patients, uh, it's important to put our immune system in check and kind of slow it down. And um, in this trial, we will we'll be studying exactly these uh, stem cells that are helping us to do that. And it's a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial where we will enroll 140 patients and uh, we will observe them for 12 months. They will be between 40 and 80 years old. And as I already said, they will be severely affected on mechanical ventilation admitted to the ICU. And we hope that we will achieve efficacy defined by the number of days the patient uh, spends on the uh, mechanical ventilation. If we are able to shorten the time that the patient is on the mechanical ventilation, it means the drug works. And I would like to say that all this effort, all these clinical trials where we are capable of doing, because as they're here at UCI, we together as researchers, with the researchers from these companies and the researchers in the whole country, we unite together and fight from this disease. And the, another effort we as a taxpayers can contribute in this situation is essentially uh, five years ago, in, uh, California, uh, citizens uh, decided uh, and created uh, California Institute of Regenerative Medicine. And it's our uh, effort uh, where we together uh, essentially contribute to the development of science. And that's why we feel that it's a very important time in life, in our lives, where we all can contribute on different levels to help to defy this disease and um, defend ourselves from many other diseases that are coming through, um, through their uh, mutual common um, efforts. And that's why United We Stand. Thank you. <laughs>